please work. So, Bonnaroo was understandably canceled this year. I decided to take the time that I would have spent traveling to and from the festival, plus a whole lot more, and make this. It's a DIY Bonnaroo time capsule of sorts. Basically, I took this old alarm clock radio and transformed it such that rather than dial into a radio station, you pick a day of the week, a time of day, and a Bonnaroo stage so that you can listen to whoever was playing at that place and time. It's like a physical mixtape. No, that's already a thing. It's like an interactive mixtape that you can use to relive your Bonnaroo glory days. I'll show you how it works. Bonnaroo traditionally runs from Thursday to Sunday, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick one of those days. Next, you're going to want to slide on over to one of the stages. Once you've arrived at your stage of choice, you can manually scroll through the schedule for that day. Each of the times you see here corresponds to the start time of an artist's set. And when you're ready to listen, just hit the play button. Oh, and you can hit the info button to learn more about who's currently playing. If you let an artist play all the way out, the next time slot will be queued up automatically. This was super fun to build. I'm really happy with how it came out. And now I'm gonna be sending it to my friend DJ, who has a birthday this week, because this year would have been our fifth Bonnaroo together. And I know he's also bummed to have missed it this year. You might notice that this video is not even close to being over. And that's because I decided to try and document my entire design and build process. If you're interested in how it came together, I encourage you to keep watching, though I will warn you. I get way into the weeds. If you feel yourself getting bored, just know that it's not gonna get any less technical. I noticed I use the word conveniently a lot. Do not be fooled, I did not make this convenient. At one point, I am wearing a pair of pants with a big hole in the crotch. I am too lazy to edit it out, but too proud to let you think that you realized it before I did. I make some pretty crazy faces when I'm concentrating on something. Anyways, please enjoy. Please ask questions, offer suggestions for future projects, share with anyone you think might be interested. I'm, I'm super grateful for your time. Um, yeah, here's the build. First of all, this is what the clock used to look like. It's a General Electric Model 7-4630A from the late 80s, if I had to guess. Anyways, I really want it to look like itself when it's done. I don't want it to be super obvious that it was modified. It should still look really nice sitting on a shelf or counter somewhere. So that means I'm gonna be using as much of the original hardware as possible. After taking a peek at the guts of this thing, I'm actually not too worried about getting the electronics working. All of the buttons and knobs seem to function correctly, so I really just have to figure out where they are connected to the board and add my own connections to the existing circuitry. Now, assuming I can get that done, what's next? What do these components actually control? Here's a very sloppy schematic. First, we're gonna start with a music player. This thing will have to store and decode audio files, as well as drive the radio's speaker. It can't just be any off-the-shelf MP3 player though, we need to be able to control and monitor it remotely. Next, and perhaps most importantly, we have the microcontroller. This is the brains of the operation. It's going to be in charge of monitoring input events from a user, updating the clock face, and sending commands to the music player. For the clock face, I'm going to be using four of these 16-segment LED displays. The original seven segment displays look great, but I want to be able to show full English text as well as numeric values. The high resolution of the 16 segment modules will definitely help with that readability. Plus, they're a little bigger and brighter, which I think will add just a dash of visual flair. For input, I've got five standard buttons, a four-way switch, a two-way toggle on the side of the clock, the volume knob, and the station tuner knob. 
The buttons and switches are pretty easy to deal with. I'm just going to hook them all up to one of these I.O. expander chips, which will keep the microcontroller updated with their current states. The volume knob is also easy. I can use this directly as an analog input to the microcontroller. The tuner is going to be a little more interesting. The knob that a user physically turns does not directly control any electrical components. It drives a pulley system which is anchored by this big white plastic piece over the middle of the circuit board. It might be tricky to latch on to whatever component is hiding behind there, but we'll deal with that later. Also, I am going to try to make a few changes to the outside of the clock. First, I don't think this plastic faceplate is going to look great with my new 16 segment displays, so I'm going to try to cut a new one out of acrylic and paint it with appropriately sized rectangles stenciled out for the tuner and clock face. And finally, the labels. I want to change the labels for all of the buttons and switches to more accurately represent their new jobs. I also want to change the station tuner label. The AM FM stations should be replaced with the names of the different stages at Bonnaroo. For both of these, I'm going to try to use layered black and silver adhesive vinyl to cover everything up with my new designs. I'll use my Cricut Maker to cut the vinyl. So yeah, here's a bunch of footage of me doing all of that stuff. So this is the original faceplate for the old clock. I'm going to try cutting my own out of some acrylic using the Shaper Origin. I have never cut acrylic with this before, I'm excited to see how it goes. Pretty damn good to me.
All right, so I, I painted the back black, and then I peeled off the little logo, uh, and then I painted that part white. Um, I, it's not quite dry enough yet for me to peel off the, the, the main part of the stencils, the, the viewport. It's hard to see. Um, but you can see there, the logo looks pretty good. It's um, The lines are not quite as clean as I would have hoped, and it looks like the paint kind of bled a tiny, tiny bit. I don't know. You can't really tell. Yeah. No, that's going to be good enough, I think. We'll see how it looks all together. This was easy enough to make where I can just cut and paint another one pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, i got to learn how to paint on acrylic because I'm just... This is two projects in a row where it has not gone particularly well. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll come back to this when I... Uh, when I peel off the rest of the stencil, see how it looks. So finished wiring up all the input. Um, you can see I ended up having to cut a bunch of the traces to just to isolate all the components, but it was it was pretty straightforward. Um, and you can see I have it hooked up to an Arduino sketch that just reads the input from each button. You can see as I press, the state changes, and as I slide the day of the week switch, um, I get a two-bit value based on two of the terminals on there. So everything seems to be working pretty great. I think it's time to move on to the display. I'm starting to wire up the LED driver boards. Um, so I'm using these 16-bit digital I.O. expanders uh, where each bit is going to drive a single segment in uh, one of these digits. Uh, I'm not going to use the dot, so there's there's actually 17 LEDs in here. One is for this little dot. I'm not going to need that. Um, so now I just got to put a bunch of resistors in so that I can safely drive the LEDs. And I'm going to build two of these boards and stack them on top of each other um, because I have four of these to drive. So I'll need four I.O. expanders. <laughs>
So now I'm at the point where I need to figure out how to encode the position of this, which this used to be the, the, the station dial for the radio. So um, this used to have AM, FM, uh, you know, 80 whatever hertz to 100 whatever hertz um, to, to pick your station. As you can see, I'm changing it to uh, switch between stages at Bonnaroo. Um, this, these aren't the final graphics, but the idea is that you're going to be able to dial into a particular stage at a particular day at a particular time. Um, so I think I have a solution for, for getting this data into the uh, microcontroller. Um, I, I, f I turned it over and I found that this track was already here uh, to keep this little plastic piece in place. Uh, and so I, what I'm going to try to do is couple this slide potentiometer. This is just something out of like a, an old um, DJ mixer or something, uh, just a cheap slide potentiometer. I'm going to couple this to the plastic piece by using a little 3D printed piece that I made here. Just a tiny little piece of plastic. I just measured it to fit around uh, the potentiometer. So I'm going to go around there and then this part goes right in the track in between the conveniently notched uh, plastic piece here. So then I'm, if once I glue this potentiometer in place, uh, I can just turn this. Um, again, conveniently the, the, the perfect length too. I just had one of these laying around. Um, and all I gotta do is, is hook these up to the, to the microcontroller and, and read the voltage. And uh, I should have a pretty good idea of where this uh, plastic dial is at any given time. We'll see how it works. Real quick before I close everything up, I just wanted to demonstrate how everything I've done so far fits together in the case. First thing going in is the LED displays with the driver boards. Uh, I do feel like this could have been a lot more compact, but this was relatively cheap and simple. This board towards the top actually has two different parts on it. The black piece on the right is the microcontroller, which is where my code runs. The red piece on the left is an RTC module. That's what keeps real world time. Finally, here is the music player module. This is just gonna sit somewhere in here once it gets wired up. This is a DF player mini. I think I got it on eBay. The nice thing about this is it has a built-in amplifier so I can connect it directly to the original speaker from the clock. Okay, things are fitting where they need to go and you can't see it right now but they're lighting up the way they're supposed to. However, you will also notice that the digits here do not line up with the faceplate. Another mistake on my part, though, I think this, I was always gonna have to fix this um, just based on the design of the faceplate. Um, you know, the, the digits fit lo really nicely in the old slot here, but you know, that just doesn't line up with the new design. So uh, what I'm going to try to do is use our, our good friend, Mr. Dremel, uh, and I'm gonna try to just kind of cut out this plastic here um, and, and hope that I can slide these over. And I'm going to wear glasses because I'm responsible. So things are mostly working now. Um, you can see there's a little bit of weirdness on the display here, but that only happens when I'm powering it from my laptop. Uh, normally it's gonna be plugged into a phone charger and it works fine with that, so I'm not gonna bother fixing anything there. Um, you say, we can see we have sound now. Volume works. Um, and so the, the next thing I wanna do 
is make it so that when you turn the dial, um, you hear some kind of analog, you know, warbly tuning sounds like you'd actually be tuning a radio. And of course, uh, I, I didn't record those before I took this radio apart. Um, but fortunately, my wife found this gorgeous old Sony radio on the street outside of our house. So uh, I'm going to record some, some tuning sounds off of that. Uh, normally, I would plug it into the, the headphone jack and, and just record directly, but um, I, I can't find an aux cable, so I'm going to use, just, just hold a microphone up to the speaker and record it. Uh, I, you know, I'm recording static sounds, essentially, so I'm not too worried about sound quality. So, yeah, going to do that now. So here we are in our recycling closet storage space. Um, it's the only place I can find with a plug that I can make completely dark right now. So I'm going to test the backlighting. I added some LEDs uh, in here behind the, the, the acrylic and one of them is conveniently placed behind the, the Bonnaroo logo here. So I'm hoping it makes it look good. Um, the video is not going to look good just because it's it's on my phone and it's going to have to sh shift a lot when the light goes off, but we're going to try it anyway. Here we go. Yeah, that looks really good. The light is catching the, uh, the scan line thing here really, really nicely. So I think this is going to be perfect. I still have to print out a new label here. I don't, I really don't like how that looks, but yeah, I think we're good. either made it to the end or skipped to the end. Either way, thanks again for watching. I hope you were able to get something out of this. It was my first time making one of these and I definitely underestimated how much work it takes to simultaneously build something and tell a story about it. But if you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I am hopefully going to be making more videos like this in the future. So, thanks again.